The first 300 game on the Professional Bowlers Tour telecast was bowled by Jack Biondolillo, 1967, in the Firestone Tournament of Champions. Is it quiet in here? But not now. Beautiful ball that way. Oh, well, has this man got the control going for him today? Ten in a row. All right, here's a uh, slow motion stop action here. Let's watch Jack here in slow motion. Look at this deliberate. The reaction. All the way in reaction on that ball. Look at this. Look at this. Down on his knees. Now we're back we live. Go. Back live. Number 11. Hold it, Jack. All right. Number All right. 11. Number 11. 11. All right. In a row. Here we are. One more ball, ladies and gentlemen, for $10,000. The first in ABC history and Pro Bowlers Tour at Firestone Tournament of Champions, Akron, Ohio, Riviera Lanes. You could hear a feather float right to the floor right now. Here $10, is a $10,000 ball. Let's watch this ball close, Ted. It's out. Hold it. Listen to this crowd, ladies and gentlemen. Jack Biondolo, Houston, Texas. The first 300 game on ABC's Pro Bowlers Tour in Riviera Lane. Jack's 300 game, in fact, all sanctioned 300 games are logged in this Hall of Fame computer. If you bowled one or your friend, come here to the museum. Punch up your names and you'll see it displayed on the screen. Our next perfect game was in 1969 on the Professional Bowlers Tour telecast, Johnny Gunther. Nine strikes in a row. The man in the ball. See what happens to those pins. This is the tenth frame. Ten in a row for Johnny Gunther. Very confident too, Keith. He likes that angle. He's playing it direct, catching the track late. Ball is settling in the pocket. I think we could very well see him do it here, Keith. Johnny Gunther has 10 strikes in a row. This is the 11th. That's it, Keith. When you get that 11, the crowd really comes alive because they know that now this is it. There you see it. 11 big strikes in a row. And now for the all-important 12. $10,000 and a new Cougar, all on this ball. There's nothing left to say. Let's just watch it. Nelson, as we entered the 70s, there were even more changes. You're right, Chris. Boeing continued to grow in popularity, and Boeing lanes were starting to wear too much. The lacquer surface we had in the 1950s and 60s just wouldn't hold up to this increased lineage. So along came polyurethane lane surfaces, much harder lane surfaces, and this changed the game quite a bit because the rubber bowling ball would no longer roll very smoothly on the polyurethane surface. So along came plastic bowling balls, and plastic bowling balls were very compatible with polyurethane lane surface, and of course, Boeing continued to grow from there. Well, Bo, did all these changes help you become the 1970 Bowler of the Year? Well, the changes a little bit helped, Chris, but really I was a lacquer bowler. I was a down and in finesse bowler. In 1970, when I was Player of the Year, I won four tournaments, but they were all on lacquer surfaces. Everybody hadn't changed to polyurethane yet, so I was winning on lacquer, but still changing 
changing my game and molding it for the 70s. At that time, one of the leaders in bowling was Don Johnson. In the late 1960s, on lacquer surfaces, Don was a fairly good player on the Pro Tour. But as urethane lanes came in and plastic balls of the 70s, Johnson came to the forefront. Now, Don is best remembered for not the perfect 300, but for a near miss. Two to go. Chris Don is so excited right now because that ball locked up the match. Right. He is the winner here at Firestone. So he already has 25 grand. A boy that has finished second here in 67 and 68, fifth the other time, and here he has finally made it to the top. Chris, what a way to finish our telecast. But right now, he has won it, but the point is two strikes, $10,000 from ABC. Let's watch. and gentlemen he carefully looks up at the overhead sheet and you know the story he needs exactly one strike Chris 25,000 in his pocket 10,000 on this ball Solid 10, Chris. Unbelievable. And the very last ball, Don Johnson. A tremendous hit. There's Marianne Johnson. Well, obviously, I'm probably remembered most because uh, of the 299 game. Uh, again, a lot of people feel sorry for me because I left the 10 pin. And uh, it was probably the best ball I threw. That's why I got nine. That's what I tell everybody. And I'll never forget. One of the owners of the Go Palm, Sam Service, told me that night, he said, tomorrow you're going to bowl 11, 12 balls. That's all you're going to throw is 12 balls. And he was right. That's all he threw was 12 balls. Don Johnson, the Kokomo Kid, won 26 championships and bowled numerous 300 games. But he'll always be remembered by this reaction to his 299 victory at the Firestone Tournament of Champions. Don Johnson was a dominant player in the early 70s. All the rest of the players had to make a change from the rubber ball. That meant learning a new grip. The plastic ball was slippery. Number two, they had to learn to throw harder because the plastic ball hooked a lot more. Now the manufacturers continued to improve on the bowling balls in the 1970s, making them more and more powerful. And nobody epitomized the power of the 1970s than Mark Roth. Mark was bowler of the year four times, and with his power, we could always expect the impossible. Off for a 29 pin lead. Oh! He teased it, but he leaves 7 10. And he leaves the crowd buzzing. A good shot, apparently a good shot, hitting very light. Roth ripped the five pin and went behind the seven. The normal pin action on that hit, the five pin goes over, takes out the seven. The six came around and hits the ten, but neither one of them happened that time. Roth is just going to go for one. everything what a turnaround in 19 years of being on television here we have it the one the only never before done on television watch Roth kicks the 10 pin out of the back in a crucial situation watch this out of the pit there it goes what an unbelievable shot 